I've gone over all kinds of different gaming platforms for my first five series, but I thought I'd do something for my final first five. This is my first five indie games, and one of the criteria here is that these games had to be available for every platform, whether you play on the PC, whether you play on the Switch or PlayStation 4 or Xbox, you can get these games there. I'm going to pick five right now. We're going to start with Celeste, which was our indie game of the year winner for 2018 for our Rocket and Reagan Awards. This is an incredible platformer with exquisite controls and a beautiful story that kind of washes over you as you start to uncover the mysteries that exist throughout this game. You're going to be traversing this giant mountaintop and the traps and puzzles and dilemmas and obstructions that you're going to meet and some of the crazy creatures that you're going to encounter are going to freak you out and piss you off and you're going to have to start over again. But the game has a really wonderful onboarding structure. Even though it's challenging, it's always encouraging. It never makes you feel like it's so tough because the mechanics are excruciating or punishing you. You always feel like you can get this, you can get it, and you're gonna try it again, and you do, and it's wonderful. <laughs> Another fantastic indie game that we got our hands on this year is Dead Cells. Yes, it's been in development for a little while, and Jose has been talking about this game forever, but we uh, really got our hands on it, especially on the Switch this year. It's a wonderful Metroidvania experience, a little bit of Dark Souls interwoven in there, tons of fantastic loot to collect, lots of great weapons, lots of great magic spells, and you know, awesome abilities, you feel super powerful even though the challenge is super high and you are going to die I mean dead is in the title expect to die in this game but again it doesn't feel like it's slapping you down or punishing you too much because the reboot system is really sophisticated and you're right back into the action right away and that action is sensational you are gonna have a blast playing dead cells <laughs> I'm going to say SteamWorld Dig 1 and 2. I'm kind of cheating a bit, but you can't just play 2, even though 2 is a little bit better than SteamWorld Dig 1. They connect together really well. I love these games. They kind of take the, some of the mechanics that we've seen in games like Load Runner or Dig Dug, where you have to kind of dig through the world. Dig is in the title. You're going to be digging, but you're sort of uncovering your map that way. You're kind of figuring out where you're going to be able to go to and then retraverse to once you've picked up the power-ups that give you the abilities that give you extra boost or a little sort of jetpack action or swinging techniques. There's all kinds of great little tools that you will pick up in here. And of course, you take your loot and the gems and all the stuff that you're encountering as you're digging back into the town and you sell it and that gives you more equipment and you just become addicted to that cycle. It's a wonderful game, beautiful graphics, great music, great little story bits in there too wonderful writing. SteamWorld Dig 1 and 2, absolutely in my first five. I'm going to say Stardew Valley is one of my games as well. Not only can you play this on all the consoles, I think it's just come out on the phones as well. This is a game about relaxation, really. I mean, you're building a farm and you're it's a role-playing experience and there are some pressures in there for sure. Like you, you try to grow your crops properly and you have interactions with townsfolk and stuff like that. Picks up a little bit on uh, what Harvest Moon has been doing for years, but it's a little bit more mature, a little bit more sophisticated in uh, the relationships that you have with the individuals that you meet. You're growing crops and you're taking care of animals and you're interacting with townsfolk and selling stuff and buying stuff and you just get totally consumed and sucked into this world. It's a really hard game to put down and it's also got a fantastic story structure in there as well. Stardew Valley is wonderful and absolutely in my first five. And the last game for my first five is Inside from Play Dead, which you can play on everything and I think it's also on the phones as well. It's a platformer. It's very easy to play. There's some pretty, you know, intricate puzzles that you you have to kind of navigate through so it's a bit of a puzzle platformer and you're basically just trying to stay alive as all kinds of crazy machinery is trying to get you it's very bleak and desaturated all the colors all of the look of this game is very stark and kind of utilitarian in a way but it's so engrossing this is one of those titles where you're just like oh my god what's gonna happen what's gonna happen what's gonna happen and then you are absolutely shocked at the end of this title and that's about all I really want to say about inside this is one that you don't want to talk to anybody else about while you're playing it. Just experience it, but absolutely do. This is a total mind trip of a game. So there you go. If you've been wondering what indie games to check out, because I know it's the AAA stuff that gets all the attention, and if you've been trying to figure out and weed through all of these indie game titles out there, I wanted to list out a bunch that I think are worth your time. Obviously, there are a tremendous amount of excellent indie titles out there to take a look out for, but uh, I think if you want to start with five, these would be five that I would go for for sure. Enjoy them and play forever.